Hello and welcome to lesson two of domain two, where we talk about asset security. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the asset life cycle. As we get into this lesson, there's a little phrase that I'd like you to keep in mind. And it's just kind of a goofy little phrase here. Is Mr. Dad categorizable? But you really wanna focus on this first part here, is Mr. Dad, because those first letters are gonna represent specific words that are in the asset life cycle process. And I just thought this image was kind of funny, so I thought I'd include it, the super dad image. So the first step in the asset classification process is to identify or classify, or identify and classify. And this is where you determine the value of the asset as well. You're also gonna determine the ownership in this step. The next step of the life cycle is to secure the asset. And you're gonna, of course, secure it based on its value and its classification. Typically, the way that you're gonna secure it is by f establishing a baseline, a secure baseline for the asset. The next step is to monitor the asset's value. You're gonna monitor the asset value for changes, and this will have an impact on protection levels that are applied to it. The next step, if the asset value changes, is you're gonna to try to recover that asset value. So you'll need the ability to recover from any changes this could be in the form of backup, redundancy, or restoration activities, which is why I've got this USB stick here. The next step is going to be dispose, and that has two sub-steps. We have archive, and we have our archive backup tape here, and then we have defensible destruction. And so as you can see, the first letters here spell our little acronym up there. I-S-M-R-D-A-D -D is Mr. Dad categorizable. And the reason I use the word categorizable is because the next topic is categorization. So what is categorization? Categorization is basically the impact on the asset or the impact to the organization if there's a loss of confidentiality, integrity, or availability of the asset. So it's important to note the difference between classification and categorization is that classification indicates value and categorization indicates the impact. So for example, you're going to articulate categorization in the terms of high, medium, and low, whereas value would usually be in monetary or some other description, confidential, and so forth. So for example, if we have this meteor that's about to hit a city, or let's say that this is a pandemic that's going to hit your city, which is what we're going through right now, certain services are going to become unavailable. That's going to have an impact on everyone's life. People can't get haircuts, they can't get toilet paper, they can't get eggs, whatever the case may be. So the next topic is where we talk about the creation of what's called a record retention policy. And I just put policy up here because I thought it was also kind of a good thing to keep in mind for just policy in general. So it talks about the need to be aware of business needs when you create a policy and also regulations that are applicable to the policy that you're creating but specifically for records retention. So you need to understand those, and you also need to understand and classify assets or records. So I put the stars here sort of as a visual for, you're gonna rate the asset or you're gonna classify it as something confidential or, or top secret or proprietary or sensitive and so on and so forth. Then we have record retention periods, which is how long we're gonna lock it away into storage so you have to define those in the policy. And then you have to draft, develop, and train people. So you have to draft the policy, you have to develop it, and then you have to train people on it. Once you're done with that, you have to audit the policy and you have to evaluate it. Now an audit and an evaluation, these are formal processes. And there's a separate video, I believe, that where I talk about the difference between audits and reviews. And so as you see, the next step here it talks about a review and to document the things that you do to develop the policy. So the audit, of course, is going to be formal and the review is going to be informal. So there might be something like that to keep in mind. And uh, this arrow, I actually should have put it up here at the audit and evaluating step to point to this auditor over here or investigator or whatever. So a review is much more, is much less formal. A, re a review is where you just kind of go over it to make sure it's up to date and so forth. And an audit is where you actually, it's very formal and there's documentation and there's findings and there's accountability there. 
As always, thank you for watching the video. Head over to cissprep.net for over 1,200 practice questions, and have a great day.